question is for Alan. So all of my friends, once we saw Claude on screen, we applauded, we were so thrilled, which of course brings the next logical question. When are we gonna see hooligans? I mean, for HBO especially, what a wonderful opportunity. <laughs> um, hooligans is the strip club? Yes! It may not have the same name, but there will be a, um, a business uh, venture that involves people of both sexes taking their clothes off for paying audiences. And it will have a completely other twisted supernatural purpose in season five. <laughs> My name is Erica. And first I want to thank you for having the sexiest show on Sunday nights. <laughs> women hold it together with all of these sexy guys in the show. <laughs> um, I'd like to ask, what kind of soups are we likely to see that we haven't seen yet? Uh, I know, I'm thinking. <laughs> soups? Um, cream of mushroom? <laughs> well, I do believe that this, this year we are going to see uh, that we haven't seen yet, we will see um, uh, spirits without bodies, whether you want to call them ghosts or not, that's one. We have seen glimpses of a particular kind of brujo-based freakish creature slash demon slash something that we will see a lot more of this year. And we're currently working on uh, starting storylines for season five, and uh, we're doing a lot of research on particular on different kinds of supernatural creatures that we may may not have seen before. Hi, my name is Elijah. I just want to let you guys know we really appreciate everything that you guys do. It's a really great, great show. And we Part question for Alex. Uh, one, my wife would like to know if she should anticipate a large amount of shirt missage from your next episodes. She would really like that. And what your most memorable experience has been in the show, I'd really like to hear about it. But it was fun flying. I like that. I want to do more of that. And, uh, and the, the flashbacks have been fun. I mean, there are amazing, so many amazing moments on the show, but it's, uh, I love shooting this stuff in Swedish. The flashbacks and the, the Viking stuff was great. And it's just like that. I always think those are great moments, and it, it get to learn, you know, more about Eric by, and I mean, and Bill as well. I've seen all these flashbacks, and uh, you know, uh, where they come from, why they are, who they are today. Uh, so those would be great. Hi, I'm my name is Kendra, and my question is for Mr. Ball. Uh, I fell in love with you during Six Feet Under. So Is, is how is it different working on a show that you develop creatively versus a show like True Blood that you have to collaborate with an author? Well, I can't really, I can only talk about Six Feet Under and True Blood, uh, just those two examples for myself. Six Feet Under was a fantastic experience, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. It was a little depressing. <laughs> um, True Blood is never depressing. True Blood is always fun. I get to work with this amazing cast of characters, these amazing actors, um, all of whom are really incredibly talented, incredibly professional, incredibly good people, and that's so rare. Um, I work with great producers and writers and designers and directors and editors, and everybody on the show is so great. And I think 
a lot of it has to do with the nature of the show being supernatural and so much outlandish, crazy stuff happening. I think we just really like to come to work because we have fun. And sometimes I can't believe I'm getting to make my living this way because I would do it anyway, because it's really fun. Um, I'm not saying Six Feet Under was not fun, uh, but it was not fun in the same kind of way. There were days where I drove into my parking lot on Six Feet Under and I was like, oh my god, I have to, you know, we have to deal with Brenda being a sex addict or this person who committed suicide. And of course, we have all that stuff on this show, but for some reason, it's just more fun. <laughs> And um, I see that she's kind of being that way and trying to take care of Eric in his time of need. And I'm kind of wondering, how would Eric react if their situation were reversed and Pam were, you know, the, uh, the one who lost her memory? And how would Pam be without her memory? Right. That's a good question. I mean, we saw a little bit last year, you know, he, he went to some lengths to make sure that I was no longer being tortured by the Magister. Right? And about, I don't know. I mean, I like to think he would, you know, do everything to save Pam. <laughs> see that last season, Eric is willing to die. He's willing to meet the true dead for his progeny. Uh, she is, he doesn't care a lot about uh, many people or vampires, but uh, Pam is very, I mean, it's a very special relationship. She's, uh, yeah, she means a lot to him. And who would Pam? Right, would she be like a horrible dresser? <laughs> <laughs> she what? Yeah, she'd be some homemaker. <laughs> Love children. <laughs> Horrible. Let's hope we never see that. Scary. <laughs> Pam playing with kids. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tanya, and I love all you guys. I love Alex, by the way, personally. Um, <laughs> uh, I like you a lot. I'm not ready to say that. That's okay. I love you as a little strong. I want to... Baby steps, baby steps. I can live with that. But there is potential. to diverge from Charlene Harris's um, original novels. In season one, you actually followed the novel pretty closely, but I was wondering how over time you progressively choose to sort of stay with it, but then develop your own storylines. I think the, the, the guiding principle in that regard is the books are all narrated by Sookie. So the books are Sookie's story and all the other characters appear as they appear in Sookie's story. When they're not involved in Sookie's story, they don't exist. Um, if we were to do that, I think there would be two big drawbacks. One, Anna would work 12 hours a day, five days a week, and she would be exhausted. Um, and the other one is there would be no surprises, because everybody can go out and buy the books and read the books, and you know exactly what's gonna happen. Um, and, and so, but it's, it's generally, because our show is much more of an ensemble show, it's generally trying to figure out what the stories are for the other characters who are not so key. And, to, and, and uh, uh, even though we do diverge from the books at times, uh, I, I do believe that the reason, the, the main guiding principle for us is, even if we do things differently from the books, we always try to remain very true to the spirit and the world of the books.